Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm-hmm. Da na na da da. No. Y'all, y'all, just this stop. This is a sham. <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Happy Monday, everybody. How was everybody's weekend? It was good. We all went to a wedding. We did, yeah. yeah. Yesterday's wedding. Yeah. That was really fun. We we should have showed a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yes, know. Yes, yes. Yeah, None of us thought about it. We had a good time, though. It was, it a, was good a good time. Yeah. I needed to sleep all day Saturday, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sunday. Wait, so we go on no, Friday? It's Friday, yeah. That is a parent thing to say. You're just like, I, <laughs> I need, I yes. need to get back to sleep. Yes. Is what I need to <laughs> do. I need to get back to sleep. All right, let's get to it, guys. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are married again. The couple said I do for the second time over the weekend at Ben's estate in Georgia. Jen wore a Ralph Lauren dress with a long 20-foot veil, and Ben wore a white tuxedo jacket and black pants. Some of Ben's buddies were there as well. Matt Damon, of course, Jimmy Kimmel, and director Kevin Smith, who posted this pic wearing his signature shorts, jacket, and backwards baseball cap, all in white, which was the dress code for the ceremony. But the weekend wasn't without drama. Not one, but two ambulances were seen leaving the property on Friday. Ben's mom reportedly hurt her leg and needed stitches, and another man went to the hospital on Saturday, but nobody knows why. So it's not a wedding until you have two ambulances leave the party. Oh, uh, no. No ambulances were at the wedding we were at. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after we left. It was yeah. lame. It was lame. Don't you yeah. feel like it's like a bad omen? I don't want to, like, have an ambulance come. I know you can't control it, but I'm like, oh, man, I'm two? doomed. Yeah, two seems like a sign. The second guy would be like, listen, are you sure you need to <laughs> yeah. go to the hospital? Because we already just had someone leave. And yeah. everyone saw it. Yeah. Maybe he was overserved. You know what I mean? Maybe You call an ambulance for that? Maybe it was overserved. If you do it right. Yeah. I've seen a couple. <laughs> Me too. I've seen a couple couple situations. I mean, I, honestly, like I look at this and I'm just like the whole time I'm just thinking about Lindsay going like, could you not call the ambulance? Like, <laughs> yeah, like for real. Yeah, like, it's, just, this is my day. <laughs> I, yeah, but I, I looked at that. First of all, I don't know, Jeff, how would you feel if like Kevin Smith showed up to you and Jordan's wedding wearing what he was wearing? Could we get a picture? I was reading a prompt. I didn't really get a good look at him. And, uh, he looks like he, shorts. He looks like but he's isn't that his look? Yeah, that's his look. Work. That's his thing. But it's not your day. And I like Kevin Smith. I like his movies. It's not your day, though. I was I always wonder about wedding. You he got bridal. skinny. Like, is it, wow. Isn't it he like got really skinny? Yeah, like, he isn't it their day? At least he didn't wear black. Day? If he came up with like black or yellow, then you're I, like, being disrespectful. Yeah, but white shorts? He's following the rules, and that's what he's been wearing since he knew Ben Affleck. That's true. I don't think he's stealing them. Mall rats? That's right. Yeah. Great movie. Very good. I wonder how it would hold up today. Yeah, me too. I don't know if, if it, it would. would. Who <laughs> knows? Who knows? All right, so one person was missing from the event, Ben's brother Casey Affleck. He was seen leaving a Starbucks in L.A. on Saturday. When asked why he wasn't at the wedding, he said he fell asleep. People Magazine said he People Magazine said he didn't attend due to family obligations. Casey did post this throwback pic on Instagram, writing, quote, good things are worth waiting for. Welcome to the family. Get ready for some real dysfunction. Kidding, Jen. Oh. You're a gem. We love you so much. Al, you grunted. You're not into it? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> I mean, just like so many. That was like a spinning backhanded compliment. Like, welcome to the family. We're dysfunctional. I think that was a shot at Ben. When you're not going to show up at your brother's wedding, either have your PR person write a glowing review about how much you love them and how much you're uh, heartbroken you can't be there, but just like making those little comments and then not showing up and then posting a photo with no heart in it that was taken by somebody that does not know or like you guys, I think it was obvious and it just kind of did highlight weirdly the dis- dysfunction. Yeah, family obligation, it's a wedding. That's the obligation, you would think. He but does he have his own family, he kids has, and his stuff? His son's uh, soccer game apparently was being played at that time, but clearly this says a lot with what it's not saying. There's something wrong there. Really? Yes. And yeah. also, that's your brother. It's a little weird for you not to be at this. We're all going to find out, too, from the paparazzi. Also, I wonder, and I just pause. <laughs> Do you have any more thought. points? <laughs> yes. I'm like, good, take it away. <laughs> J-Lo didn't want the sexual harassment with Casey Affleck maybe at the wedding. Remember, he settled some for lawsuits. He wasn't presenting at the Academy Awards for that. Maybe that was it, Lindsay? To me, it's just the picture for me. Like, you picked the worst picture of J-Lo. Uh, let's pop that up do, one more time. Because J-Lo looks good almost every time. So the fact that you picked this picture is like, you're trying to be shady. But what if Absolutely. something... Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. I'm going to go on the other yeah. side of this. What if something happened in that photo that they're like, oh, man, remember when that happened and all three of us really bonded? And then he's saying straight up, 
save the looks. Go, go, go that way. Go that way. Okay. So say he. Okay, you threw me off with that look. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just so confused. I'm just taking the other side. trying to defend this. I am defending this. He said we're very dysfunctional. What family it doesn't say that at a wedding? The best man. Hey, welcome to our dysfunctional family. Oh, toast. Yeah. Everyone does that. I, That's every single I, I wedding can, can on the that. planet. I'm fine with and that. And you're and if something's wrong with your kid, they're like, why didn't you go to the wedding? He's like, I fell asleep. I'm not giving the paparazzi any stories. Maybe his son is sick. A speculation would be going to a soccer game. No, but maybe that, he's yeah. sick and he's like, Ben, I can't make it, man. You're getting married again. You're probably going to get married four more times before I'm dead. I'm going to sit this one out, buddy. You know <laughs> oh, what I mean? Wow. I, I'm on the other side. I, I just feel like if you, and, and going with your <laughs> analogy, Jeff, if you're doing that picture that like it's a kind of in, inside joke, you need to uh, you need to make that in, no, clear you in don't. the caption. You can just be like, hey, we came a long way since these times. Remember late nights in L.A.? Now you guys are growing up. Good luck, you crazy kids. That's a good point. You can, you can kind of put that in context because if, if I posted a crazy picture of us it looking crazy, I'd be like, this was this was season one. Right. All right. right. Which, thanks. You'd have context. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I, I lost that context. one. I tried to go the, the other way. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I got dirty <laughs> looks and Snickers bad, from all bad. over the studio. <laughs> Someone just dumped over my computer. Right? Okay. <laughs> one of the men that who robbed, who, one of the men who robbed Kim Kardashian in Paris is speaking out now. So back in 2016, Kim was tied up and robbed in her hotel room by a group of men who posted, who posed as police officers. They stole $10 million worth of jewelry, if you remember, including her $4 million engagement ring from Kanye West that she had posted on Instagram. The robber was released early from prison because of health reasons. He told Vice News he feels no remorse and even blamed Kim for showing off her jewels on social media. Let's watch. How do you feel about the incident now? Do you feel guilty at all about what happened? Vu qu'elle jetait l'argent par les fenêtres, euh, j'étais là pour le récupérer, c'est tout. Coupable, bon, je m'en fiche. <rire> je m'en fiche. D'être peut-être un peu moins de voyeurisme par rapport aux gens qui n'ont pas les moyens. Pour certains, c'est provocateur. Seems like a nice guy if you don't read the caption. Right, yeah. Right? I guess you're a nice French We are in Looneyville. That, that was yeah, right that's crazy. crazy. We're criminals yeah. are just being like, First of all, how is he out of jail? That's what the I'm Central Park Five out. just were just gonna rot in jail forever. This dude, he seemed perfectly healthy to me. He's having a cafe, having a little chit chat <laughs> on a rainy French. How dare you? I know. He's non-remorseful, which is even crazier. Yeah. And but I I feel like we are all to blame of this. I'm, I'm blame all y'all, not me. You, you guys have set the tone where now it's okay. I turn on Netflix and my cue is inventing Anna, some other hot person that committed fraud, some other hot person that killed their boyfriend's girlfriend. We are obsessed with attractive people doing crimes and doing crimes against rich people. And now the criminals are now getting, he got paid for that, I am sure, to sit there and talk about how he doesn't care, Lindsay. And we, we had to change the conversation around it because a lot of people were like, oh, Kim Kardashian has all this stuff. Who cares about the ring? And we had to be like, okay, she's a human being who got robbed, was terrified for her life, was hysterical in tears, even years later when she did interviews about it. This is a real person going through a real experience. And so I think like seeing that guy now and where we are now where we're not judging her by showing, hopefully still not, when she got robbed, it's just a robbery. Seeing him just sit there and say, hey, don't show your stuff. It's like, no, you need to go back to jail right now, sir. What if a carjacker said that? You shouldn't be driving such a nice car. Lindsay had to take it. Don't put it in my face. Like, what? I'm going to take the robber's side. Dude, no, I'm cannot. kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm done. I'm walking off. I wanted the camera back on Lindsay's face, but we were playing that clip. Well, really quick, people just think she was just robbed. No, she was gagged. She was handcuffed. She was put in a bathtub, told her children would be killed. Her, sec her so uh, secret service, her security was taken away. This woman had her robe taken off and she had almost nothing underneath it and was like, this is when I get raped. Sorry I got that, but that's when I watched her on Dave Letterman and she started to cry. You don't need to apologize this for what happened uh, to yeah, her. Because well, you need to paint the picture that it was right. very traumatic. Yes. 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 It wasn't just, oh, Kim, give me the ring. It was like, I might die. And so the, I think the, that's and ridiculous. This is all because people ridiculous. have decided they don't like her, so they're, they're, you're allowed to just say that. Even somebody that robbed her is allowed to get away with saying that. There is no way that if this was a beloved figure, that, first of all, that person's face would see the light of day. But the fact that people do not like Kim Kardashian because she has wealth, I mean, she's sh showing off what she owns. Like, I bet why, this, yeah. why can't she do that? And why well, is she, he allowed to? Well, she doesn't do it anymore, but I do think the Kardashians have some resources to come after this guy, and I wonder what will happen after this video. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Al, because I'm going to make it a little more serious than it is, even Please. though this was very serious. Absolutely. We take these... 
people, these insane mental patients that shoot up schools and do these horrific crimes. And then on Netflix, all you see on the front page is, hey, where's this guy 10 years later? I don't care where you are 10 years later. I don't care that you went to this prison and now you're giving this guy even more credit. Mm -hmm. And then right. there's even more insane people that write them saying, I want to get married to you because yeah. you're so insane. It's like we need to stop as Americans what we're watching, what we're putting on and what we're profiting right. from. That guy here in Colorado, uh, Chris Watts or whatever, mm -hmm. the guy that murdered his wife and put his right. kids in oil. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he got married mm -hmm. in jail. Yeah, he's kicking it. Mm -hmm. He's fine. Conjugal and visits. It's, it's just it, uh, I'm with you, man. Where are, where are we right now? I think we all need to back up because this has gone too far. And the fact that he was so confident, just like chilling. It didn't seem like he was on parole. What a jerk. Didn't seem remorseful. I would really like to talk to the judge and be like, what did you see that you thought that this person who's unrepentant and clearly healthy enough to maybe give it another try lens? Who knows? Right. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just stuck. All these people today have been a little crazy. I know, definitely. <laughs> Very crazy. Coming up on DBL, what a way to start the week. A man who lives life on the edge, how Colin O'Brady conquered a walk across Antarctica alone. And Ireland Baldwin debuts a new buzz cut, how she's encouraging others to live life outside the box. Closed captioning provided by. I think it is one of those stories we're all going to be like, what? Who raised yeah. you? Why am I right all the time? <laughs> am I going crazy? Welcome to another oh, week yeah. of Jeff's Mustache. Wow. So it turns out, out get her start Chris now. Watts is isn't married, but is a girlfriend. It's a stupid little caring point. No, no one not, cares yeah. that man I is mean, evil and should go away. Does anyone somewhere. here think the Kardashians could do problem. something to he the Frenchman? Like molesting I think so. Yeah. Friend, I think this like, uh, could go well, not well for that Frenchman. Yeah. Don't make yourself yeah. a target. What does she say, Chris like, Jenner? Never go against the well, Yeah, I guess I, mean, I watch that, so maybe I am. <laughs> but at least it's people that are like getting out, no starting their life. Yeah. Wait, which one is it? Lock love, love after lockup. Oh, is my God. Al's like the number one clientele. Uh, You're yeah. the clientele. Me and Patty are just You like, and Patty are the number one and two clientele. Is it back on? I was I was yeah. cheering yeah. on. Oh, you were? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's back. It's life now. Yeah. Did you see the Love Is Blind? People got divorced. Two of them within no. the same weekend. Really? Weekend? Now? Yeah. Do you think that these reality show people don't work out? Yeah, they fully got divorced. I, I, didn't I, didn't know. Know. I, I thought you had to like stay married for a little while. I, they did. It was I think over like a certain you know amount of months. shows are done filming and then six yeah. months later, yeah, early no, no, yeah. like, yeah. That's a long time. I committed for. Love Is Blind. They usually a little okay, bit more okay. successful. Yeah, but these two yeah, were. Is not good. No. Does The Bachelor have a good like? No, you know what Big Brother does. Oh really? Big Brother Jeff has more weddings. Then, like, stay married. Right? Oh, people? for sure. See? In the bachelor. Weddings, more kids, and the bachelor. Yeah. Oh wow. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Because you guys ever meet up like a Big Brother? Is it on the same network? No. Okay. No. I wonder if they do like all the reality show people like past and present See, meet up. You know what? ABC really takes care of like their reality people. Not that CBS didn't. They did a lot for me, but uh, they really like keep them going and give them continuing jobs. And yeah, they have like the reunions and all that other stuff. Like, Got it. once right. you're on Big Brother, like. See you later, Gator. Yeah. <laughs> After a while. Put it on your website. They hooked me up for a little while. Until the fire. And then, <laughs> there was no. Welcome back. So Alec Baldwin's daughter is sporting a bold new look. Ireland Baldwin recently shaved off her long hair into a bleach blonde buzz cut. On Instagram, she wrote that her hair was destroyed by years of bleach and that she was always... Didn't she just bleach it again? Yeah. And that she always wanted to shave her head. She had to do things that scare you, do things you'll never do. Okay, I'm a little, <laughs> little confused about the bleach thing. A little confused, not going to lie. But let's... Maybe not get into Ireland okay. Baldwin, okay? Let's take it to you believe in her statement. Do live life outside the box. Do things that you're scared of. Well, I used to be very into that statement. Like, yes, I want to skydive, all like the literal stuff. But with a kid now, it's like, eh. The risk is not worth the reward for I me. Like, ya. yes, I have an adrenaline rush. I need to go home and see my baby. More importantly than me jumping out of a plane. That's so fair. my perspective changed on those things. But other things like 
you know, subconsciously scary, like trying new right. things. I will always be down for that, stuff that doesn't actually risk my life. Yeah, I think, I mean, I've learned a lot about the big chop and a lot about people shaving their head. I mean, we have that image of Britney in 2007 in a very unhealthy way, but you can remove your hair in a way that's very cleansing and sort of ritualistic, and a lot of monks have shaved heads. So in some ways, she's trying, oh my God, he's asleep. <laughs> oh no. How does this pertain to you, though? How does it pertain to you? Yeah. Take risks. <laughs> I shave my head, I shave the back of my head. Don't talk about shaving heads anymore. We're going to talk. Do I talk about taking risks? Yeah, what do you do with the risk? How do you feel about big risks and doing things outside your comfort zone? I did stand up in front of hundreds and hundreds, maybe dozens of strangers. But that's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> but didn't, did that, that, that make you that is, that's, that's, that's risky, that's though. Risky, did that make you a would, better person? Heck yeah. That's I mean, where I wanted yes, to go. I'm so sorry. This is full in And that's where the producers wanted us to go when they told us three times. This morning on the call. Yeah, I was there. And Karen just left the desk. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say something. Not, you know, that impressed with this. The hair? It just seems like first not of all, the hair. He, he <laughs> wants to know about you taking personal risks in your life, Al. God. I, I mean, but like, I mean, any kind of aesthetic change, yes, you can do it. But then when you put it on Instagram, no, I'm going somewhere with this. If you put it on Instagram, which is a social media Try. in which you are looking for, uh, you know, accolades, aren't you staying completely within the box? I hear you. I would say it would be more risky to delete your social media account. It would be more risky to move to a monastery and live a completely different life than staying in your comfort zone and changing your hair a little bit or changing your makeup. I don't think that that's that much of a change. Did this go where you thought it was going to go? No. This yeah. is exactly why we didn't want to stay on the hair because you guys got into monk work and like, <laughs> you know, work. it's just like, come on now. It just no, brings up I, I like to bring it back to the conversation and we'll get out of here. I, I live my life by this. Yes. You have to try things, even if you don't succeed you have to fail and I'm not saying you did absolutely you have to fail and you have to try every day to get outside your comfort zone whether it's some people get nervous going to the grocery store you shared that story right absolutely it's little things baby steps on to success and if you don't fail don't go outside your comfort zone kind of to Al's point you're gonna be stuck in that same world that you're always been in yeah like, I'm scared Al I mean Al sorry Brooks my husband I don't know why I said Al is leaving Ooh, for a little bit Freudian no mm. but I'm not good at, at being alone and there's a whole week and I am like this will make you a better person. This will make you a stronger person. I don't want to do it, but I got to face the fear and do it anyway. Uh, That's where I wanted us yeah. to go. See, you got your little moment that you could put on Instagram. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on DVL, a man who became the first person to make a solo trip across Antarctica. Talk about outside the box. Yeah. <laughs> is continuing to inspire others. That's next. Not the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> The Democrats' new law to address climate change is called the Inflation Reduction Act, and it includes a $7,500 tax credit for people who buy electric vehicles. There already was such a credit on the books, but this law changes which cars are eligible, and a lot of Verify viewers asked us to look into those changes. So let's verify. Are all electric vehicles eligible for the new tax credit? Our sources, the full text of the Inflation Reduction Act, the 2008 law that created the old tax credit, and consumer reports. The existing EV tax credit had a significant limitation. Only 200,000 credits were available to each manufacturer. So once that number was hit, no more buyers could get the credit for that brand of car. The new law removes that cap. Good news for popular brands like Tesla that haven't been eligible for years. But there are a lot of new restrictions as well. First, only cars that are assembled in North America are eligible. According to Consumer Reports, that rules out some companies that make their EVs abroad, like Hyundai, Toyota, and Kia. Second, it rules out the most expensive models. Trucks, vans, and SUVs are only eligible if they cost 80 grand or less. Sedans and other cars have to be under 55 grand. That rules out some popular luxury vehicles, like the Tesla Model S and Porsche Taycan. Third, there's an income cap on taxpayers. Couples have to earn 300 grand a year or less to get the credit. Individuals, 150,000 or less. And finally, there are requirements about where the EV batteries are made and where the minerals in them get mined. There's a list of companies, including a bunch in China, that automakers are banned from contracting with at all. And in the first year this law takes effect, 2023, at least 40% of the minerals and 50% of the other components of the battery have to be from the US or its free trade partners. And those percentages go up every year. So while the Inflation Reduction Act does expand the EV tax credit, we can verify, no, not all electric vehicles will be eligible for it.
Welcome back. Imagine walking across Antarctica in deathly cold temperatures while pulling a 370 pound sled. We talked with Colin O'Brady who actually did that and so much more. Check it out. Welcome to the show, Colin. It's so good to see you. Thanks for having me. So Colin, your adventures started all after you were seriously burned in Thailand. So how do you go from not being able to wear normal shoes to being a professional triathlete? Yeah, you know, it was a, a long road. I was told I would never walk again normally after being burned in a fire in Thailand, but uh, my incredible mother actually got me through it. She instilled with me what I call in my new book, The 12 Hour Walk, a possible mindset, an empowered way of thinking that unlocks a life of limitless possibilities. So I focused on getting out of that bed, taking those first steps and uh, eventually raced my first triathlon, won it. And here I am 15 years later with 10 world records. In your book, you said your intuition ended up saving your life when you decided not to continue climbing to the summit of K2. So now, what was that like making that decision in the moment and how does it feel now looking back? You know, it was an incredibly tough call. You know, I've kind of made my career on the guy who can push through and persevere, you know, walking solo across Antarctica for 54 days, you know, setting numerous world records and other difficult things. So it's interesting to be in another very difficult, hard spot, high on K2, 24,000 feet. Um, you know, it's minus 70 degrees out night in the night. Nothing really going wrong, but something told me inside that I should turn around. Um, obviously, it's still a, a deep wound for me. I lost five friends out there on that expedition, um, but turning back definitely saved my life. Let's talk about your book, The 12 Hour Walk. It was inspired by your 12 hour treks to cross Antarctica. What pushed you to keep going for that long? Yeah, so I was out there for 54 days alone, becoming trying to become the first person to make the crossing. And I literally got to the other side on my last bite of food. So if I hadn't gone 12 hours every single day, um, and I was already beat up, I, my ribs were hicking, sticking out, my hip bones were sticking out, I was very exhausted and tired, I was completely out of resource and supplies. So going back 50 days, if I gone any shorter, I wouldn't have made it to the end. Wow. But those 12 hours every single day in stillness and silence, even though my body was declining, my mind got stronger and sharper. I found this deep levels of clarity, fulfillment, joy, love, empathy. And that's really what I bring back to people with the 12 hour walk. So the 12 hour walk, the book, edge of your seat storytelling, it'll entertain you. If you love adventure, you love Shackleton, you love the book, but it also has a call to action that invites people to take a walk of their own. It is completely free to join 12hourwalk.com. Um, and it's an amazing movement that I'm really proud to be starting. That's so interesting. The 12 hour walk now you say must be done alone. You have to do it without your phone. What do you say to people who think it's just unrealistic to be unplugged that long? I can't do it. I can't do it. So uh, you can have your phone with you, but a phone is in airplane mode. I've also built an app that can help track your walk. So you have it with you for safety. Um, but the whole point is to take that walk alone in stillness and silence. You can take as many breaks as you want. So this literally is for everyone. You don't have to train for it, but you do have to commit to the 12 hours in stillness and silence. And for the person that's asking, I can't do this, the entire book is about the limiting beliefs we all have. So these excuses we have in our mind, I'm not strong enough. What if I fail? I don't like being uncomfortable. You know, uh, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. These are the limiting beliefs that are holding us back in our day to day life. So often the excuses people apply to the 12 hour walk, I tell them I'm holding up a mirror because you're actually having those same excuses throughout your life. So one of the chapters in your book is about how failure is something that we all have to embrace. So do you have a memory of one of the failures that sticks out the most to you? Yeah, I love to tell people I sit here with 10 world records and New York Times bestselling author thing of these accolades, but that's only built on the back of so many failures, so many trials and tribulations. When I say I got burned in a fire, it wasn't an accident. I actually myself jumped the flaming jump rope and lit myself on fire. So I would say that is a massive failure as a young person to just make such an egregious mistake that um, almost tragically ended my life. So look, I have made mistake after mistake after mistake, but I love to say it's failure plus perseverance that equals success. So I've learned so much through my failures and I encourage people to get out there, take those risks. Maybe don't jump a Fleming jump rope, um, but uh, take risks in a manageable way that allow you to learn and grow. Colin, unbelievable story and so inspiring for so many of our viewers. Thanks so much for joining us. DBL Nation, go pick up a copy of his book, The 12 Hour Walk, wherever books are sold and get out your front door. We'll be right back. Promotional consideration is brought to you by 16 states in the U.S. are battling at least one active wildfire. People who live near fires are encouraged to stay indoors to avoid breathing air contaminated with smoke because it can irritate your eyes, nose, and throat. 
and lead to long-term health problems. Oregon officials recommend running your air conditioning if you have one. But can air conditioners really filter out smoke from wildfires? Let's verify. Our sources are the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers, the California Air Resources Board, or CARB, and the Environmental Protection Agency. You'll probably see the most smoke in the air while a fire is actively burning, but CARB says smoke and the pollutants it contains can linger in the air for weeks or even months, depending on the weather and size of the fire. The EPA recommends keeping the windows closed to limit how much smoke gets into your home, but even then, smoke can still get inside through bathroom and kitchen fans that vent to the outside or through small openings and cracks around windows and doors. This is where our sources say a window or split system AC can help because they do not pull in air from the outside. Instead, they cool indoor air by first running it through a filter. Filters are rated from 1 to 16 on a scale called MERV. A higher number means the filter is more effective at catching toxins, like those found in smoke. The American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers tells Verify you'll need a filter with a MERV rating of at least 13 to help during wildfire conditions, and you'll need to replace it at least every two days because it will be catching a lot of particles. So, yes, air conditioners can filter out wildfire smoke from within your home, if you use high enough grade filters and replace them frequently. The EPA also suggests people who live in wildfire-prone areas ensure there's a tight seal between window ACs and the window. Those who don't have AC can use a portable air cleaner to help filter during wildfires. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. After more than two years of the COVID-19 pandemic and the rising concerns about monkeypox, some people are looking for ways to stop the spread of illness and disease in their home. Some social media users say they use bleach to clean their homes and have also accidentally used other products, causing a dangerous reaction. So let's verify. Is it safe to mix bleach with other household cleaners? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the American Cleaning Institute, the Clorox Company, and the health departments for Utah and Washington State. Many non-bleach products are made with ammonia, and the Washington and Utah health departments say when they're mixed with bleach, they can produce a toxic chlorine gas. Clorox and the CDC warn the combination can be deadly when inhaled and to seek medical help immediately if you experience any symptoms. It's not just ammonia products that can be a problem. Other cleaning products are made with acids like vinegar, which can also be toxic to breathe when mixed with bleach. So no, it is not safe to mix bleach with other household cleaners. The American Cleaning Institute says it's safest to just use bleach on its own, as directed on the label, and to always wear gloves and to properly ventilate the room. Welcome back. So, who watched House of the Dragon yesterday on HBO? Do you guys know yeah, that? Yeah, I did. Did you really? Mm -hmm. We what? watched it as a family, like Colin, my parents. We did, just sat down. It didn't crash because it crashed on a, a, some on some TV. Oh, did it? The Fire Stick, I think Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Like, nobody could watch. Did you watch? I did, and I watched Vengeance by B.J. Novak. That movie. Yeah, we only got five seconds. Okay, no, I didn't. No, get it. Did you watch? Did no, you like I didn't it? See it? It was good. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Tell Recommend. us about the monks. Hair. Hair. <laughs>